Hello. Hello. No, I'm saying hello to the listeners. Oh, okay. So am I. Oh, okay. This is Adam and Joe on XFM. Filling in for Ricky and Steve. We're here for the next two hours, aren't we, Adam? Yes. I've got a strange echo in my headphones. Yeah, my headphones weren't working at all, and then our producer Lisa came over and, um, and turned them on, and they were at full volume. I'm g do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take them off. Really? Yeah. Look. Did you hear that's that? That's not that's uh, that's not the done thing, Adam. Has everything stopped? See, I don't know what's going on anymore. Wow. Wow. Is this going to affect your performance? Yeah, it might do. Anyway, so hi, we're Adam and Joe. Here we are filling in for Ricky and Steve on XFM. Coming up in the show, we've of course got Dizzy's in the Dock. We, we're also going to have another bad accent competition. We've got prizes to give away uh, and prizes to give away. And prizes, CDs and DVDs. Fantastic music from the likes of The Strokes, 50 Cent, Yeah Yeah Yeah, Super Furry Animals, The Libertines, Outcast, the new one from Outcast. But frankly, we're a bit worried about about the show, basically, and the way it's going, because one of the only publications that reviews this show is Heat Magazine. Yeah. Which is, uh, in fact, I think it's the only publication that, that, that actually writes a paragraph about this show. Right. Every week. It's weekly, Heat, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is, yes. Uh, and when we started out, I think before we even did our first show, they gave us five red stars. Yeah, which is, you know, that's... that's it's very like... difficult to get in Heat. You've got to be a really top-notch programme, like, say, The Salon, to get yeah. five red stars. Or Footballers' Wives. Yeah. The five red stars are reserved for the creme de la creme of British entertainment. Yeah. And we had them, I think, before our first show had even gone out, just on the, just on sheer potential. Uh, and then I think we held on to them for the second week. And maybe even the third week. No, no, you're dreaming. No, you I, know, I, I think, definitely think we held on to them for three weeks. I think we only had the five red stars from Heat for the first week. And I think that was because I would they, contest that. I think that's because they hadn't heard it. I'm going to go back home to my Heat, my, my bound collection of heat back issues <laughs> what's it bound what are you in? laughing human flesh human flesh yes <laughs> the, book, the books of the dead yeah and i'm gonna look back and i'm gonna and, and i'm sure we got five stars for more than a, more than a couple of weeks anyway but anyway now we've gone down to four and there's no explanation in in the text of why we went down to four you'd expect yeah. them to give one little criticism right so that we could know how we could build things back up again to, back to that five star zenith yeah exactly but this week all they seem to do is go on about how uh, they're waiting for Ricky and Steve to get back, and how, like, how long are Ricky and Steve taking to do the Office Christmas special and stuff like that? Everyone's waiting for Ricky and Steve to get back. Listen, we don't know when they're coming back. You're just going to have to make do with us for the moment. I'm really sorry. We thought by this point people would have forgotten about Ricky and Steve. Uh, they'll never forget about Ricky and Steve because they were nominated for awards and No, they... but in the context of this radio show... No, no, they never will. It's a classic show. Uh, why, do, why do we bother then? Uh, free CDs? No, we don't even mm. get free CDs, do we? No. Let's play some music to help us get over it anyway. Okay, here's, uh, here's Eminem with Lose Yourself. This is the clean version you'll oh, be happy to hear. thank gosh okay. for that. That was a clean comment. Look. If you had... Yeah, that's the Strokes and 12.15. Is it 12.15? I've forgotten what time it is on the Strokes record. Uh, probably 12.15, yeah. No, 12.51, sorry. 12.51. Probably 12.51, yeah. I would have been really early if it had been yeah. 12.15. So now we're going to do our top three, aren't we, Ad? Top three, and, and this week it's going to be top three. Last week it was top three annoying adverts. We're staying on a sort of TV theme. And this week it's going to be top three confusing things we've seen on television this week. Yeah. Things that have made us question television, question life, just question everything, really. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's. I think it's maybe making it sound more exciting than it really is to call it a top three. I, I think that's not that exciting, so we can get away with it. Okay, all right then. Anyway, I was just, uh, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of, of um, cosmetics, uh, skincare products, that kind of mm. thing. Anything that makes you look young or uh, youthful or, you know, maintains your youthful zest. And um, I noticed this week that uh, L'Oreal has a new product which actually decreases you. Decreases what? You. Yeah, your, your, your face. Well, well, obviously that word's got two meanings, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. De de decreasing. Ah. ah. Is it spelt the same? Ah. Yeah. Ah. Decrease, yeah. I'm just saying ah. So they, what, decrease... So they have they noticed that, that the word decrease, as in to make smaller, would be, is the same as... Yeah, oh, I suppose it would be hyphenated, wouldn't it? De it's hyphenated. Decrease. Exactly, decrease. As in get wrinkles out of your face, is what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah. But it's a bad thing, though, isn't it, to decrease your face? To remove the creases isn't a bad thing, no. no. Yeah, but to actually... To, 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 to shrink the size of the face is bad, yeah. yeah. So what you're saying, you can't be sure which of those two things this product does. 
Yeah. Do wrinkle or just make your face smaller. Decrease. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. decrease your face. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm not so worried because I guess from their point of view, actually, if your face did get smaller, that would be good because it would it would get rid of the wrinkles because it would tighten up. Right. This is confusing already. So this is a this is an advert you saw. Yeah. And it reminded me of the conversation we had last week about about the micro and the special new speak uh, micro. Yeah. Micro the the very annoying campaign inventing new words. For example, uh, spacious and safe. Spafe. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so they they've kind of invented a new word, or maybe it's not invented, uh, but it's uh, the the in, one of the ingredients in the decreasing cream is called Boswellox. 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 Like like Boswell for Bosley from Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Uh, c combined with an ox, or combined with a test a word for testicles. Exactly. I think really that's what it reminds me of most, and surely that's. I mean, I it thought maybe it was. It does sound very very like you can't say that word, can you? The b the b word. It seems strange that you can't say it, because it's, it's the sort of word farmers would use. Yeah. It's a sort of healthy word. Well, can it's we not say, a... uh, what about Bolox? That's a different thing. That's just with one L. What about... That's like Botox. What about Bullocks? <laughs> yeah, Bullocks. Let's say Bullocks. We'll just say Bullocks. Anyway, so Boswellox sounds... It sounds very like Bullocks. Very like Bullocks. Which in turn sounds very like... Bollocks. Bollocks. <laughs> Botox. <laughs> and um, I looked it up on the website well just to done. see that it was a real thing um you notice i call it just the website i don't go anywhere with sort of saying the interweb i like calling it the in the interesting net don't do that just Why call not? it that i don't like people who just make up crazy names for it like they're afraid of technology it's like people who call computers the confuser boot up the confuser <laughs> <laughs> like, that is bad. Anyway, keep anyway. stick stick on the subject. Boswell Ox. It's a breakthrough fighter complex created by L'Oreal Paris that combines a power dose of Boswellia serrata extract and manganese, which help reduce the appearance of lines caused by facial microcontractions. Okay? Oh God, go, go through that once more. Boswell Ox is a breakthrough fighter complex. Okay, Cre stop there. Right. A breakthrough fighter complex. Haven't you ever heard of phyto complexes? Phyto. F-I-G-H-T-O. P-H-Y-T-O. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Phyto. I was imagining a sort of Second World War squadron in miniature. Yeah. That you'd rub onto your face like, a, a, like, like about 40 well-trained young lads mm -hmm. in, made very small and into a cream. Phyto complex. Yeah. We're mobilising the fighter complex on the eastern <laughs> cheek. But it's not even spelt with an F. No, no. Phyto. No. That's why it's very scientific. If you spelled it with an F, it wouldn't actually be scientific. Other ingredients contained within this product, leponite, or laponite, it forms a continuous network to support the smoothing fibres and help enhance the optical reduction of skin imperfections. Help enhance the optical reduction. <laughs> <laughs> so it enhances a reduction. No, it helps. It helps to, <laughs> so it doesn't actually do it, but no, it, helps it helps to enhance the an optical, optical reduction. Which is that's a contradiction in terms, isn't it? In a way, to enhance, to help. Oh, I'm confused. It's now. very confusing. I thought I thought maybe about the whole complex that may the the uh, ad rather than Boswellox. Boswellox, perhaps a new uh, step in a kind of honest direction for L'Oreal. You know, a bit like in Crazy People. You remember when the Dudley Moore film? Yeah, when Dudley Moore gets mental patients to come up with advertising slogans that tell the truth about the products they're selling. Yeah. In this case, it's a cream that actually makes you look younger. Sounds like Boswellox. Well, it is. You get it? It's a it's Boswellox. <laughs> what? No, I'm so confused. Oh, I, I'm confused as well. Anyway, that's number one in our confusing things we've seen on TV this week. No, um, hang on, that's number three. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you uh, can't start with number one. I'm thinking of three... Think of your dramatic structure, Alan Gotts. Oh, Lord, three... Lord, I trouble so hard. Oh, Lord, I trouble so Don't nobody know my trouble for God. Yeah. Don't nobody know I know about the trouble, trouble troubles he's got. He's been going on about them for the last three years. No, no, nobody knows my troubles but God, I think he's saying. Oh. He? Well, everyone knows them now. Yeah. Um, you're listening to Adam and Joe on XFM. We're talking about the most confusing things we've seen on television this week. We've built them into a top three. We've done number three, which was Boswell Ox, the exciting new chemical that helps to... What? It Enhance, helps... To uh, re enhances reduction. It helps. It's a fighter complex, and it helps reduce the appearance of lines, um, and uh, it also helps to enhance the optical reduction of there skin imperfections. Go. 
That was Boswell Ox. That was at number three. Uh, now we're going to do our number two most confusing thing. But before we do that, you can obviously email us here at XFM, Adam and Joe, A-N-D, at xfm.co.uk. And Paul Brownie's emailed in saying that there's a new... Uh, uh, advert for a drink called Oasis on the side of a bus, and this is, we were talking about this last week about this new trend in advertising to conjoin words to create new words, like they do with the Nissan Micra. And he says there's an advert that says uh, Oasis is so new and improved, it's new proved. That's rubbish. That's terrible. But this is really proving that that our theory is right. That this really is the new emergent trend in advertising, forming annoying new words, trying to make people speak a product related, a new product related language. That's something that we used to do. Uh, that's something everyone does when they're young, isn't that's it? That's what's so insidious about it. They take things that are genuinely fun to do in your own and time and company, and then they plaster them all over buses. And ruin them. And ruin them. How but about number two confusing thing you've seen this week? Uh, number two confusing thing I've seen this week is quite an obvious one, but basically it's the Ben Affleck uh, hair shampoo advert. What? Not, is it for L'Oreal? I think it's another L'Oreal <laughs> product. They're the number one <laughs> the generators number one. <laughs> of confusing advertising campaigns and generally depressing rubbish on telly. Even though, uh, of course, the products may well be excellent. Mm, I'm sure they are excellent. Full of magnesium. And fighter complexes. <laughs> anyway, what's confusing well, you, you about Well, you've Affleck? seen this ad, haven't you? Yeah, he's kind of taking the mick, isn't he? Well, there's a lot of confusing things about this ad. The, 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 his face is confusing. He's, his face is getting thinner on top and fatter on the bottom. Other people have observed this. Will you remind me what happens in the ad? Uh, he is in the L'Oreal lab. Uh, and his hair is being tested scientifically by beautiful ladies. The love lab. The love lab. And it may be the... Uh, is it Le Jardin du Max Facteur? Or is that That's outside, just outside the window? Yeah. yeah. It's Le Laboratoire Garnier après de la Jardin de Max Factor. Imagine <laughs> Just getting, off the Champs Elysees. <laughs> Imagine if you were a scientist and you actually got a job in the Le Max Factor. Could you go to Paris and ask for where Le Jardin de Max Factor is? Yeah. Is it open to the public? No, only probably Jane, not. Jane Seymour's allowed in, it's, no one else. <laughs> it's probably been vandalised. Like the like Le, Le Jardin de Blue Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what does Affleck do? Stick he's, to the point. He's getting Affleck snogged. gets his, head uh, his hair tugged by beautiful women. Yes. And I should have transcribed this advert, but I haven't. And it's something, to do with, uh, it's something to do with his hair being strong and he wants to keep it. He doesn't want it to fall out. And as a result, he uses this stupid advert. Uh, but instead of saying, here comes the science bit... He just says, here comes the science. That's kind of hip hop isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because, exactly, because something about saying bit is, a, is for the ladies. Right. Le that's the sort of thing a girl would say. Here comes the science bit. Yes. Who are the ladies who say that? Is it Aniston? Uh, Aniston, yeah. Or Courtney Cox, one of those terrible, lovely ladies. Uh, Aniston is the chief Aniston. Offender. So it's more masculine just to say, here comes the science. Because you're right, it's like dropping science. It's like hip-hop. But the most confusing thing about this whole advert campaign is why. Why? Why would Ben Affleck do... Th why would he do it? What, are you what joking? What possible reason is there for Affleck? Well, the money. Yeah, he, but how much money does a man need? Oh, once you're Affleck, he's insane with power. He's but drunk with power. Surely you have... When you make a decision like that, you have to, you have to weigh up your, your public image, which with Affleck is suffering already. He can't be uh, blind to the fact that his integrity stock is very low after a series of appalling films climaxing in Giggly or Jiggly or whatever this terrible flop is. Joe, man. And now, this is very bad. He's taken very bad advice to do this advert. No. And the money cannot be worth the damage it's going to do to his career. It doesn't That's matter. what is confusing to me. That What happens... Do you not understand fame dynamics? What well, happens? you keep saying this every time we get offered an ad. What? Just do it. Yeah, I, yeah. because the thing is, if you accumulate enough money then you can completely cut yourself off from reality and not have <laughs> to worry society. about anything like that. Yeah, but you're not cutting yourself off from reality because you're putting yourselves in people's homes, having your hair tugged by models and being a prat. That sounds good, you see, the way you said it. <laughs> That's attractive to me. Anyway, it's an interesting debate. We're going to tell you our number one most confusing thing we've seen on TV this week after these messages. You're listening to Adam and Joe on XFM. XFM. <laughs> Keeping up with Adam and Joe. That's Travis and Rhea Fendi. You're listening to Adam and Joe on XFM. <laughs> and 
now it is time for our countdown. <laughs> I was going to do the, the voice, but I can't do it. We're counting down our top three confusing things we've seen on television this week. At number three, it's been Boswell Ox. Boswell Ox, the confusing L'Oreal product which supposedly decreases your face. What does that mean, L'Oreal? At number two... Uh, what was number two? Ben Affleck's do, uh, do the L'Oreal. Do At the number two, Ben Affleck's L'Oreal advert. Well, that's too late because it's finished. That was a disaster. It was a total disaster. What's at number one? At number one... Oh, <laughs> I was going to line the thing up, but I couldn't do it in time. Uh, what is it, number one? Well, we're not going to tell people until after the next record, right? No, no, no. Let's tell them now. I tell think them now. They've hung on for long enough. Come on, tell them. What Are is you it? sure? Yeah. Come on, it's don't build it up anymore, because people are going gonna... to be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Well, the number one most confusing thing I've seen on television this week is the advert for the remote control car that you get... Uh, you subscribe to the magazine and you get little bits of the remote control car every month. And it's a very good advert because it starts with, this is a nice car, mm. were it to be a real car and <laughs> the, the size of a real car and not plastic and rubbish, yeah. it would be a really nice car. So it starts with the camera on the ground and this, this really nice Porsche racing car jumping over the camera and landing in the mud as if it's a highlight from a rally programme. And then a man's feet <laughs> step into the frame, and you realise the car's no bigger than his boot. Yeah. Uh, so it's basically a, a... It starts very exciting and decreases into just depressing, this advert. And by the end, you realise it's a magazine all about the remote control car, and you get sort of four cogs per issue. And the confu... I mean, this may be totally obvious to everybody else, but this is the worst, the most stupid possible way of acquiring a remote control car <laughs> in the in the world, isn't it? You can't think of a you can think of a worse way. Uh, I want a remote control car. Well, why don't you get it cog by cog, sent you in the post over two years <laughs> <laughs> for two ninety nine a month? Like, who would say yes to that? A proposition? child. Yeah, but it's taking advantage of it's taking advantage of the excitement of getting something free attached to a magazine. Yeah, that that gives something inherent worth, doesn't it? If you attach anything to a magazine, suddenly it seems uh, as if it's got extra value. An inflatable picture frame. And inf exactly, it's it's free. It's exciting. Yeah, and just the idea of like, uh, I, I was thinking of like starting up another magazine that say gave away a house mm. that you could live in. But in small instalments over, say, 60 years. Brick by brick. Not not even that. Well, you, it would have to be a fragment of a brick. Well, that, it's going to take longer than <laughs> well, 60 still, years. Well, still, I think people would go for it. And you wouldn't be as boring as a brick every, every month. You'd have a little bit of a fridge. Mm. And a tiny, tiny bit <laughs> of a garden. So it would be very evocative. Next month it would be, oh, here's the first bit of my loft conversion. <laughs> and it would just be a tiny bit of foam. But inside the magazine there'd be a huge description about where this tiny cube of foam fits into your final uh, loft conversion. Mm. This is a really good idea and I might get the people at Dangostini or whoever it is that do the uh, remote control car. Well, the only problem on the with phone, your... Let's get them on the phone. Let's yeah. get them on. Let's get... Like, yeah, what? The problem with your idea and these mags in general, of course, is that I find you... Because I, I, I think... I did one for the human body. I wanted to build up a, a you know, scale model. They didn't give... They did, that's like sounds like a serial killer magazine, a free bit of the human body every month. Yeah, like an ear. <laughs> Bloody yeah. ear. No, it was, it was one of those, um, you know, uh, the, the see-through body thing. Oh, that's right. It was a sort of Damien Hirst type thing. You got a see-through body, didn't you? And then you collected all the muscles and guts tendons and, and guts and things. But the thing is, I, I, I just got like a spleen or whatever and I uh, was waiting for the liver <laughs> and it uh, it got the, the magazine went bust the company went bust did it are you sure it didn't just disappear off the shelves because sometimes they sell them in news agents for the first month and then they go subscription only maybe that's what happened you've got to subscribe man you've got to subscribe yeah that's the whole thing that's the whole deal that's why there were only two tiny Shakespeare books in the news agent and I was waiting to build up the whole set yeah. and they suddenly vanished I was waiting for tiny... What about the Morse? You get a Morse, Inspector Morse magazine as well, can't you? With a free episode of Inspector Morse and a whole magazine dedicated to Morse. Is it tiny? No, it's a, it's a substantial... What's the point? What's the point? What's the point if it's not tiny? What's the quality of the articles going to be like in that magazine after about six months of publication? Of Morse? Of Morse. Very high, I would you imagine. Reckon? Yeah, of course. Well, that's our number one most confusing thing on television, the Dangostini remote control car um, advert. And if you've actually subscribed or sent off for that magazine, then please get in touch with us and we'll arrange to have you put down by a trained vet. Adam and Joe at xfm.co.uk. I was calling through a festival I went.
Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros and Coma Girl. That comes out on October the 6th of this year, which is fantastic. Really? Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, how we convenient. Got... Exactly. Uh, oh, it's nice to hear Joe Strummer. He's one of the people I was genuinely, so even though obviously I didn't know him, I was really sad when he died, like Freddie Mercury when he died. Yeah. I actually felt depressed all day, which is quite good for someone that you don't know at all. The Strummer will be pleased. The Strummer family will be pleased. Well, Strummer himself watching us from uh clash heaven oh for goodness sake <laughs> <laughs> anyway. this is adam and joe on xfm but remember you can email us adam and joe at xfm.co.uk on any uh with any of your personal emotional or sexual problems <laughs> that would we'll be great we should laugh. do that we should do a problem show did you ever listen to that show on lbc yep, emotional all sexual the time. and marital all problems? the time that was the and best now, I, now i've got them all we used to <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> problems well now you know what to do surely yeah but that was a brilliant show. We used to listen to that, and it was filthy. Mm. And because they could basically talk about anything. If it's a problem, you're allowed to talk about anything. Yeah. Why can't we do that? We'll have a chat with our producer about that, and then we can really make this show. Well, filthy. We wouldn't give good advice, would we? Doesn't matter. You only ju you just want to hear the filth and read the filthy letters. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to have a competition very soon. We got some good prizes this week. Uh, DVDs. That's not strictly true, is it, Adam? Yeah. What do you call the best of MTV's The Tom Green Show? I know you want to steal that. <laughs> okay, that, that is quite that good. Is it's, got, it's got the Bum Bum song on it, and I like the Bum Bum, bum song. Bum Bum song. Uh, hey, speaking of which, can I just bring something up? Go on, then. Uh, today, for Ditties in the Dock, which, which viewers may... Uh, viewers. Uh, listeners may know, is our competition where we battle to play a record. I bought in the Adam and Joe single, Football, the footy song. Football, ball, 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 footy, footy, footy. And our producer says I can't play it. And Adam doesn't want me to play it either because... It's he just... rec Adam reckons I'm winning Ditties in the Dock by bringing in novelty records. And he's bringing in all these cool indie tracks that everyone really wants to hear. <laughs> And I'm bringing in no novelty songs you see, you, you, that are wiping the board. Yeah, so I bring in the football song, ball, 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 footy, footy, footy. And not only does Adam say he doesn't want me to play it, but Brian says he doesn't want me to play it. So basically, listeners, if you want to hear Adam and Joe's football song, then please email up or call in 08700 800 1234. Just basically, let's get enough uh, momentum behind the listeners who, who might want shut to hear the football song up. Uh, to, shut up. to shout down Brian the producer and Adam. Sh shut up. Because I know. You shut up! As, as much. Shut up. I want to play it. You guys want to hear it. You're riding roughshod over the whole thing. You can't just randomly start stating your case for this thing. Uh, I want you to shut no, up. No, but it's now. not going to be part of Ditties in the Dark. Uh, listen to this. We're just going to play it as, as a Stop song. talking! Listen to this. Oh, wait, 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, my God. Listen to this. Football okay. Song. Listen, no. Shh, stop Adam that. and Joe's football song. Brian, the producer, can you do something? You don't want to hear this shut indie up. rubbish. Okay. You want a funny song about football? Seriously, shut up now. On a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Can we can we carry on now with the programme? You have the power to, to just bring in a record, why don't you? I'll tell you what. I'll do that. <laughs> you faded me down. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Um, okay, oh, now, oh, it's oh. time for a competition, and it is a bad accent competition. Uh, we have this every week. Joe, when you behave, you can have your microphone back. Um, and who is this, is the question. It's an American actor doing an English accent, uh, quite badly. You have to tell us who the actor is and what the film is. This is a, the first of several clues. But if you can get it on this clue alone... We'll be pretty impressed, and, and you'll win lots of good stuff. We've got Ross Noble tickets to give away. It's a fantastic show that's been getting amazing reviews. And the tickets could be yours if you can tell us who this is. I doubted everything, even my mind. I was impotent with fear. Who is that? Should we have one more? Are you ready to rejoin society, Joe Cornish? No, I'm, su I'm sulking. Well, you sh don't... How, how... Why would you be sulking? You just sort of had a complete mental break just then. I need to hear some sort of a, f a, f a novelty football song to okay. cheer me up. No. See, I'm going to fade you down if you do that again. Here, here's the voice again. Listen. I doubted everything. Even my mind. I was impotent with fear. Okay. Uh, so the number is 08700 800 1234 or you can email at adamandjoe at xfm.co.uk you're listening to adam and joe here on xfm we're filling in for ricky and Stephen, and we're having a lovely time doing it XFM. Nothing! Nothing! Oh, someone's angry about something well, he's angry about nothing. He's got nothing, Joe. Who nothing. wouldn't want to hear a novelty song about football after that? <laughs> That's A. 
with nothing. We've got more fantastic music uh, coming up in the next hour of the program, including uh, hits from the likes of the Chemical Brothers, the Yeah Yeah Yeahs, Muse, Athlete, Libertines, Rolling Stones, The Darkness, Soup Furry Animals, Keys of Leon. The great music just keeps on coming here on XFM. We're Adam and Joe filling in for Ricky and Steve. But well, what about the competition, Ad? Competition, yeah, of course, very exciting. A lot of correct answers to our competition this week. Let's just remind you of that mystery American accent. Who's doing the accent? What is the film? Here's another different clip for you. Oh, uh, I've pressed the wrong button. Oh, okay, wow. here we go, here we go. I've seen many strange things already. Bloody wolves chasing me through some blue inferno. Was that a blue inferno? Oh, bloody hell. Blue He's most wolves. definitely English. <laughs> Bloody wolves <laughs> chasing me through some bleeding fair There's no doo doo boot doot. Here's another little clip, though. I can't get enough of this one, personally. I brought him there to Carfax Abbey. Oh, mm, because that's, that's, how, Abbey. Cause that's how English pebbles speak. Yes, it has. Carfax oh, Abbey. Yeah, yes, it has. He's <laughs> most definitely English. Carfax Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, take some callers and see if anyone's uh, got the answer right. Caller number one is Cecilia. Hello, Cecilia. Hello. How are you doing? I'm well. So, uh, well, you yeah. sound bored. <laughs> no, well, it's just that go somewhere. So what are you up to, to, Cecilia? I'm going to Cornwall. Oh, you're in your car? No, no I'm sitting at home waiting. Well, so you're not going to Cornwall. You're no, you're about no, to go to Cornwall. About yeah. Are you going yeah. on holiday? No, just for the day. Just really? for the day? That's a very long way. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I'm hoping to stay the night and then maybe come back tomorrow. You're hoping to stay the night. Might they not let you? Um, they probably will. The authorities in Cornwall. <laughs> anyway, Cecilia, let's cut to the chase. What was the film? Who was the actor? Uh, Richard E. Grant, I think. And mm -hmm. what film was it? Uh... Just name any Richard E. Grant film. You, you don't, you uh, don't have Sarah anything... Sarah and... Sarah and, um... Jack and Sarah, you're Wait. thinking. Jack and Sarah, that's it. Jack yeah. and Sarah. A Richard E. Grant, a British actor. Jack Incorrect. and Sarah, a film set in Britain. Incorrect. Uh, no, Cecilia, that's... thank you so much for your call, but... Well, I get uh, anything, then. Uh, you... You get a weekend in Cornwall. <laughs> 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 and you get permission officially to stay the night. I'll tell you, you what, may I'll tell you stay what, the night. Cecilia, because you sound like a nice person, we're going to give you uh, a, a big CD of club anthems. Oh, it's don't give her that. That's no, an insult to Cecilia. A, oh, you said she sounded like a nice she, person, and now you're giving her it. that. Joe, will you just <laughs> shut up? She sounds, she likes it. Club <laughs> Island, summer 2003. All right, yeah, Thank yeah, you yeah, for yeah, calling, thanks. Cecilia. Have a great All weekend right. in Cornwall. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Cecilia. Yeah. Okay, uh, incorrect, though. Richard, are you there? Yeah, can I change my answer, please? Oh, Richard, no, you cannot. No, you no, no you changing cannot. the answer. What was your answer that uh, you told Richard us? E. <laughs> 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 was it? Did <laughs> you really say Richard? E. E. Richard, you're all over the place. Our producer is saying that that's not the original answer you phoned <laughs> no, in no, with. Okay, uh, fair enough. What was, was what was Matt Damon? Matt Damon. Mind. Matt Damon in which film? Uh, in Jack and Sarah. <laughs> Matt Damon in <laughs> Jack and Sarah. Richard, what do you do for a living, Richard? I'm a central heat surveyor. Oh, really? Well, Richard, I hope you're a better central heating surveyor than you are a purveyor of the knowledge of films, because I'm afraid you're completely <laughs> off base The knowledge of films purveyor. Yeah. Listen, thanks a lot for calling in, though. We really appreciate it. I bet you Damon does a bad British accent. Has he done a British accent? Did he do one in Talented Mr. Ripley? Uh, no, he was American. No, that, he was American. He? He's... I don't think he's he's strayed onto British soil accent-wise. I wish he would. Katie, are you there? Yep. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, very good. That, nice to nice to hear from you. Thanks uh, a lot for calling uh, can in. I, are you in your kitchen, Katie? Oh, I'm you. in the lounge. Are you in the lounge? I thought I recognised the acoustics <laughs> of a kitchen. <laughs> Is there a lot of plastic surfaces in your lounge? No, there's nothing. We've really? Just moved in. You've just moved in. That's why it's yeah. echoey. You see, they're in my room mistake. Katie. <laughs> What do you think is the answer? Who was the actor? Can, should we just have one more listen, actually, um, before before we reveal the answer? And here is that accent once again. I've seen many strange things already. Bloody wolves chasing me through some blue inferno. Bloody wolves <laughs> chasing me through some blue inferno. So who was it, Katie? Keanu Reeves. Yes. yes. What was the film, though? Uh, Brown Stoker's Dracula. Absolutely Dracula. right. Yeah, right. yeah con Ooh. correct. Congratulations, Katie. That's Thank fantastic. You. you have won. What? What's she won? You've won tickets to go and see Ross Noble. <laughs> wow. Are you a Ross Noble fan? Yes. Yeah, that's of course everyone is. This show's <laughs> supposed to be very, very good. Everyone likes to laugh. Everyone likes some madcap buffoonery every now and again, and that's exactly what you're going to get from Noble. No, it's yeah. a great show, and I really hope you enjoy it. Plus, we'll we'll bung you a few. Uh, CDs and stuff and uh, that kind of thing. I hope your uh, new house goes well. Thank <laughs> you. Hope you don't break it. Thanks, thanks for calling, Katie. Yeah, thanks yeah. a lot. 
We really appreciate it. And here, as a little um, extra prezi for you, we're going to uh, give you another great moment from that film. Bram Stoker's Dracula, of course, is what it was. And this is a bit of Gary Oldman, one of my favourite over-actors. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is him in the title role, just acting his Let's hear it. Come nuts on. off. Listen to them. The children of the mind. What sweet music like mine. <laughs> what? He's acting so much you can hardly understand what he's saying. <laughs> Listen to them, the children of the night. <laughs> <laughs> he squeezes every single bit of acting he can. Wow, that's so powerful. What beautiful music, the mic. <laughs> I want to hear it again. Where is it? He's fantastic. And actually, if you get the uh, Dracula DVD, there's an amazing documentary which um, shows you lots of behind-the-scenes stuff, and Oldman reveals many of his acting techniques. Wow. When he wants to get into the zone for an emotional scene, he's got a little book of photographs of him and his son, and he just flicks through them, and he gets all sad. And then he's in the zone, and he can do the acting. And he carries it around with him, and he shows you the book and stuff. And he stands there, he's on set in his crazy costume, like, flicking through pictures of his, him and his son. It's a very sad sight. But he's an amazing actor. Listen to them. The children of the night. What sweet music like mine. He's not even saying... Is he trying to say children of the night? The trillifidin of the night. XFM. This is XFM. Yeah, that's, there you go. Uh, that's sympathy for the devil, remixed by the Neptunes for our Williams and Chad Hugo. Is that out already? I think that's out. Yeah, I like that. I enjoy it. I, it's an interesting. You could write a little thesis on, on you know, the Rolling Stones being influenced by black music, and then uh, there you go, black music reclaiming the Rolling Stones. I'm r working on a thesis. That would be a fascinating that. thesis. Yeah. Can you send me a copy? No. Okay, and before that you heard The Darkness with I Believe in a Thing Called Love. You're tuned to XFM 104.9, where Adam and Joe are uh, just filling in for Ricky and Steve. Yeah, don't worry, we, we won't be around for that long. <laughs> We're going to get fired pretty <coughs> soon, I would say. So you've had some strange... What, you've had some strange phone calls this weekend? Not strange, just annoying. What, what sort of phone calls? Do you never get these? That, you, you, you're sat at home... <laughs> it, this is assuming that you don't go to work and do a proper job. Um, you're sat at home, you're watching Des and Mel in the afternoon... And, um, the phone rings, and you think, ooh, phone call. Exciting. So you go and you pick it up. <laughs> Hello? And it's, uh, Well, this is already quite a disturbing insight into your life. Come on, <laughs> I know for a fact that your Watching life is Watching Des and Mel. <laughs> okay. You, you watch Des and Mel? Sometimes. I try not to watch for more than ten minutes. She's lovely, Mel. Go on, keep talking anyway. Anyway, so the phone, and it's, uh... Hello, I'm just calling from your mobile phone home insurance company. It was yesterday. Sometimes yeah. it'll be, I'm just calling from your bank, or blah, blah, blah. It'll be the same whoever's calling from wherever. And I was wondering if you had a few minutes to discuss some of your details with me. And it's, tho it's those two phrases, a few minutes, and the word to discuss, which send off alarm bells for me. Because you think, a few minutes? I don't know if I have a few minutes, you know, because technically, yes, I'm not doing anything. I'm... I'm eating crisps and I'm watching Des and Mel. But when you say a few minutes, how many minutes is that? And what does discuss? What is so vague and creepy? So, you know, I, I sort of just say, well, you know, I've in this occasion, on this occasion rather, I had the actual insurance form in front of me that this guy was talking about and I could see that it was all fine. So, hey, this looks fine. What did you want to discuss? It'll, it'll only take a few minutes, sir. I just want to discuss the details of the policy with you. Like they haven't just heard what you said. And you say, yeah, but what do you need to discuss? What are we going to be discussing? Well, we just need to check the details are all correct, because if there's any discrepancy and we have the old address or something, it may affect the terms of the policy should you need to make so a So far, this sounds like a very reasonable call. 
It's not reasonable, but because he's just saying that he wants to discuss. Uh, he doesn't. He wants not, to check the details of your policy, and I'm telling him he doesn't need to because they're all <laughs> he's fine. He's phoned a weird man who's unemployed and watching Desmond Mel and eating crisps. I want to be left in his alone. Pants no, but he what the thing to that discuss the details me, of your policy. What does he need to discuss? <laughs> you tell me. You're the man. What do you need to discuss? The details of your policy. What? I want to make sure you haven't changed address. I haven't. The details are in front of me. They're all well, correct. Well, we're having a discu- We're having a discussion now. I don't want to have a discussion. I tell you what annoys me. Have what? you fit? Well, carry, carry on. Is that all you're annoyed about? Well, th- then I get annoyed because they start sounding annoyed. They're like, "Come on, it's the middle of the afternoon. You're at home. You're obviously watching Des and Mel. What? <laughs> Can, just talk to me. It's my job. I, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to discuss these details. I with think you. that is the definition. If you're watching Des and Mel, you're basically free for any activity. Any conceivable activity you're free for. What why do you up, then? Well, there is the, uh, an emerging trend of... It, it's like chuggers, charity muggers in the street, who come and ask for your credit card details. Chuggers. chuggers they're called. Um, they've, they've sort of focused in on the fact that the first thing they say to you is make or break for them. Whatever they hit you with, whatever line they hit you with, it's got to get you. So, so, so early in, in, in the evolution of chuggers, they'd hit you with, have you got a minute for the blind? Right. Now, who hasn't got a minute for the blind? Oh, people have talked about this before, I'm sure. You know, that's just basically emotional blackmail. Yeah, when they say, like, um, do you care about people with cancer? Yeah. <laughs> so, n- so n- no, I don't. No, I, no obviously so not. So now, they've, they've sort of evolved beyond that, and now they just ask you a confusing and ear-catching question. Like, uh, if you couldn't see, would you be able to negotiate up a, st- up a set of stairs? <laughs> they don't like do that. that, do they really? Just, uh, the other day, people rang on my doorbell... And it, I think they were Jehovah's Witnesses. They were two gentlemen who said, Excuse me, uh, do you feel that the way people are dressed is influenced by fashion and music? Whoa. What did you to, say? To, to know, I said, I d- really don't f- want to answer that question on my doorstep yeah. in my pyjamas. Come in, we'll discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my hilarious anecdote about about um, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses calling was cut brutally short by that record. That was uh, Hello Sunshine by Super Furry Animals. So what happened? How did you dispatch the guy? Well, you know, I was going to go on to say that it was lucky that it was cut brutally short by that record because it had no <laughs> ending. <laughs> and I just would have mumbled on at that's, whatever came into my head. It's something that's happening, apart from the invasive phone calls, which even though you think I'm mad, I do find invasive. And I just, uh, I just get frustrated by the fact these people are phoning and then they get... They get kind of ticked off with you and you don't want to indulge their stupid rambles. They've just got a huge long list of people to call. And you're like, no, I don't really want to discuss these pointless details with you because they're all fine. And then they get all narky. But the other thing is people are increasingly coming to your actual house to discuss yeah. these things with you. Do you know what I say? I say, is this a sales call? <laughs> nice. And they usually go, mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> At which point I say, well, I'm busy, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for calling and put the f- uh, hang the phone up. There you go. Because my girlfriend gets these calls. I think my girlfriend, uh, who's probably listening, I think she fills in every single little thing in every magazine. Mm-hmm. And her name's on every mailing list in the world. She gets everything. Do you have arguments about it? No, we never mentioned it before. We probably will later today. <laughs> <laughs> but every catalogue going seems to... And every charity is after oh. her for money. She's on every mailing list, basically. Catalogues, Joe, tell me about it. <laughs> my girlfriend gets them all. <laughs> they pile up the whole door So my girlfriend they... Annabelle gets calls all the time from people saying, hello, is, 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 is... <laughs> I'm going to give away her... F- well, I don't know. I'm going to stop talking about this. It's too personal. Yeah. Well, the other thing is that um, people come to your your door. They They knock on the door, yeah? And usually the technique I employ is one knock, I won't answer it, right? <laughs> um, Why? Because it doesn't show enough enthusiasm? Yeah, yeah. One yeah, not- I don't really want to speak to you, just one knock. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't answer. One knock wouldn't bother. Because it's probably, especially where I live, some guy who's just about to lie to me to get money out of me. And I usually give it to them. I, I shouldn't really say that. <laughs> I usually give it to them. You know, there was one Two guy knocks. who came around... Hang on, stick to the, stick to the plot. Two I'm, I'm just filling you in on how I deal with the people who come round. And, and the reason I only answer after two knocks is because one guy... I used to answer on the first knock all the time, you know. And there was a guy who used to say, oh, I've just broken down around the corner and... Um, I've, bu- uh, you know, I've bust a fan belt and I just haven't got any money at all and I'm really embarrassed about this, but do you think you... Uh, I live just down the road, number 88. Do you think you could, um, give us, um, £9.58 and that's what it costs to buy a new fan belt and I'll give it to you right back, I'll post it through your door. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I give him a tenner. Off he goes and of course I never saw him again, but I mean... Hey, I just... He's got a lovely new fan belt. 
Uh, yeah. Whoever he is. Do you think he really did buy a fan belt? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> anyway, so that's the reason I only a uh, answer after two knocks now, yeah? Because usually they, they'll go away, because they'll be trying every house, just one knock, and then they'll, you know, yeah. F off. But then, um, you sh th there's a new strain of uh, personal callers that persevere with the two knocks. So I'm fooled into answering it. And it'll be um, some guy, like the latest one, was some guy asking me why I'd switched from British Gas to N Power. Oh, this is a very common one, though. This Th is covered on Watchdog and stuff. Has that happened to you? Yeah, yeah. No, they're very, very dodgy. Anybody to do with any power company, you just tell them to go away. But what they, is that? They use underhand methods to get you to switch your supplies. I've uh, seen it on Watchdog. You want to stay away from that stuff. Are they really not from British Gas? Uh, they, well, they could be, yeah, but they use under, ha you know, they employ weird companies to do it who aren't. It's all, you want to stay away from that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, this is just a public information announcement. How can Adam I stay away from it? Just, just don't, you know, anybody trying to switch your, your electricity supply, stay away. But I'm worried about, what's the point of this conversation? What do you mean? What's the point of any conversation? <laughs> well, I just worry that we've got like seven different subjects away from the subject we started out on. So let's go back to our main subject, which is really good music. <laughs> okay then. Great music. Also, later on we're going to be arguing our cases for our ditties in the dock, of course, as uh, as we always say, you know, it's the XFM playlist that we stick to here on this show, and a good thing too, because it's fantastic, but we do get one free play each week, so we'll be arguing our cases for who gets that one free play. We've both brought in a song, uh, obviously I think mine's the best, Joe's got some sort of insane suggestions, and we'll be revealing them after this. This is the Chemical Brothers, and Hey Boy, Hey Girl. Superstar DJs. Here we go. Wow, that was Outcast uh, uh, from their new uh, album, Speaker Box. Ox, 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 with lots of X's on the end. That's coming out on the 29th, I believe, the album, but the single's out on Monday. First time I'd heard that, and I'm a bit of an Outcast fan. Apparently, the album's supposed to be amazing. Speaker Box, ox, 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 ox. It's kind of. Uh, it's a double album, isn't it? It's a double album. One of them uh, has two guys in it, and they both independently recorded. Uh, yeah, they fell out, didn't they? The disc. But I don't think they did fall out. They just decided that they had so many ideas on their own, they didn't want to have to compromise their uh, idea for the other person's ideas, so they just did a CD each. But it says here that they uh, appear on each other's tracks and they cross-produce, so they produce each other's stuff. Right. Quite a good way of working, I think. Yeah. So I'm excited about that album. And, uh, but I've got a bit of a worry that it might be one of those sort of critics' albums. It's very tricksy and gimmicky and clever, clever, and, and the music press love, but no one actually likes to listen to it. Yeah, Dizzy Rascal. Um, I know exactly what you mean, Dizzy Rascal. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> basically any Similar album... Similar to The Streets, okay? This might yeah. annoy people, but personally I don't like The Streets. Yeah, I well... think he's a great guy, I think it's, it's fantastic for writing newspaper articles about, but when it comes to actually listening to it, uh, he's not a good rapper. And the loops aren't that good, and basically it's not that good. Yeah. Well, that's very controversial, It's of very course. controversial, but, you know, that's, yeah. that's me. Controversial Cornish. Controversial <laughs> Cornish. Now, I know what you mean, but I, I, it might be to do with the fact that we're quite old. And, well, you might be old. I'm 22. Uh, well, I'm, I'm much older than you in that case, mm. and uh, I, yeah, can't hand... Uh, there's no room in my life for music like that. Dizzy Rascal makes me feel threatened and frightened. Plus, it's also... It's not... You know, I just need tunes. Basically, any record that wins the Mercury Prize, you're pretty much guaranteed to listen to once and never again. Yeah. Like, uh, what's the one that, uh, Ronnie Sighs? Did you ever, do you ever listen to that album? No. Neither do I. You know, and I rushed out and bought it and thought, ooh, yeah, I've got to, got to represent, represent, and I don't think I even made it to the end of it. Yeah, well, this is what they say now, isn't it, that the Mercury Music Prize is the kiss of death. Hello, my name's Adam, and I'm on the radio. I've got a lot of things to tell you, yes, I don't. Who am I? The Dizzy Rascal. Exactly. I'm not could... quite as good as Dizzy Rascal. Are you sh Hello. I'm a nice. <laughs> I want a bunch of sweets. I want a bunch of sweets and I'm putting up my feet. You are... You're in trouble there. What? I'm rapping... Well, because you're ridiculing a very important musician. I'm not ridiculing Who has you. real problems and is expressing the problems of a real section of the community. What do you, you think? I've sitting got problems. in your pants, eating your crisps, watching Des and Mel all day. I love to watch Counting Des your Mel. proceeds it's from the latest advert. Sometimes people rip me up and annoy me. It's happening soon. You don't... You've got... You don't know anything about the way real people live in Daghetto, do you, Adam? Or in, uh, in Dabungalow. You don't know the way that Dick and Dom live in Dabungalow. I come from Dabungalow. Right? <laughs> you don't know I grew what up in Dabungalow. Like in Dabungalow. I no one knows what we're talking about because Dick and Dom in Dabungalow hasn't started yet. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm from the streets. Anyway, before uh, before we uh, started talking about that, of course, we heard Outcast. 
fantastic. And uh, we're going to hear from Athlete in just a second. Are they phoning in? Uh, no, Joe, it's just, <laughs> just a record. Um, and after that, we are going to be arguing our cases for ditties in the dock. Are you all set with yours? And you just don't use your subliminal techniques, just argue a straight uh, case. I may, I will use them if I want. All right, we got ditties in the dock coming up after this one from Athlete. <laughs> I like athlete, personally. Yeah, I bought that record. I like that a lot, athlete. Well, you know, we we I like Dizzy Rascal as well. Well, why were you just slagging him I off? I wasn't slagging him off. You were. You were doing a mocking impression of Dizzy Rascal. Do it again. My name's Dizzy Rascal, and I sit like this. No, it's just uh, <laughs> I'm just envious. <laughs> I want a Mercury Prize. It's Dizzy's in the Dock time here on the Adam and Joe Show on XFM. Uh, we're here for another twenty minutes, and we're reaching the apex of our program, which is, of course, Dizzy's in the Dock. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, that was unexpected. So we have uh, a playlist here at XFM, but we have uh, a single uh, record that we can actually choose from anything we want, and so we've uh, turned this opportunity into a segment called Dizzy's in the Dock, where we argue the case for the song we want to play, and you call in and vote for which one uh, gets to be heard. Okay, who wants to go first this week? I think you should go first this week, Adam. All right. Uh, well, our producer thinks you should go first. Why? you're a cheat. Yeah, because I'm a, a cheat. cheat. Yeah. I think... Uh, <laughs> it just gives me more opportunities to cheat. Come on. Okay, my song for Ditties in the Dock this week, ladies and gentlemen, that you can vote on 0800 800 1234, is by marvellous Marvin Gaye. Uh, he's one of the greatest singers of all time, great, one of the greatest voices of all time. I'm a big fan of Marvin Gaye, a bit of a Marvin Gaye bore, really. But this is a wonderful song by Marvin Gaye for a sunny Saturday afternoon. It, it's a previously unreleased track released uh, on his greatest hits recently. Uh, it's called Where Are We Going? And it's the most fantastic, uplifting, tuneful, lovely song with a wonderful little piano hook uh, if you haven't heard it before you'll really get it on the first play it'll lift your spirits it'll lift your day oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four just say marvin and uh, you will be get to hear this um, this Order. fantastic uh, marvin gay track he uh, is of course a fascinating guy he uh, okay that's enough <laughs> uh, he was a t he, he smokes Order. a lot of will you stop? Uh, tour buses my chambers oh, now yeah, okay go on then Okay. Marvin Gaye, 0800 800 <laughs> 1234. Just say Marvin. You don't want, it's much better than the track that you're about to hear described. <laughs> Go on, Adam, do your, Will do your you best. Shut up. Are you going to choose a Marvin Gaye track song too? Brian! <laughs> like, you see, because I've dealt with this all my life. Marvin I want Gaye. you to sort it out because it looks personal if I hit him. Um, so basically. It's such a good track, oh, seriously. Shut Marvin up. Gaye Honestly, track. please shut up. You're freaking me out. Freaking everybody else out. I've faded you down on the mic now, okay? <laughs> That's cheating. No. <laughs> shut up and go outside or just read the paper. Marvin Gaye! So, uh, or you can vote for the Trash Men. Oh, no! Surf oh, shut up! I didn't do that while the you were arguing men. your case. They're rubbish. Seriously, man, shut up. Otherwise, I will, uh, I'll come over there and I'll hit you. Okay, I'm, obviously I won't actually hit you, but I'm, can you hear that I'm getting really genuinely annoyed? The what? What's your Shut record? up. The what men? This is the trash men I want you guys to vote for, and it's uh, a song called Surfing Bird. Oh, well, everybody's heard about the bird, and it's a fantastic song. It's a garage classic. Brian, he's coming over here. Make him sit down. Make him sit down. Don't come here. I'm arguing my case. Carry, carry on oh. arguing your case. This is, this is bad. Carry on. I've just come over to Adam's mic because he's turned mine off. Go away. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's called Surfing Bird. It was featured in the film... Oh, Marvin Gaye. Oh, please <laughs> go away. It was featured in the film Full Metal Jacket. Uh, everybody's heard about the bird. It's Surfing Bird. So, uh, the choice is between Marvin Gaye... Marvin or Gaye. Surfing Bird. Marvin Gaye. That is coming up next. Titties in the dock. Get phoning now. We're going to take the first five calls. 0800 800 1234 Oh, well, everybody's heard about the bird. It's, uh absolute smash of a song it's hilarious and it's a uh, cheeky remix as well it's the cup of tea remix which oh, i have done my especially myself fade unfortunately me fade, fade uh, unfortunately Gay. we can't fade joe Marvin up anymore and we're back adam and joe here on xfm it's ditties in the dock uh, joe have you calmed down yeah i was calm all the time you I, I didn't do something as as rash and frankly immature as turning my mic down which is one of the cardinal violating one of the basic understandings of the european convention of radio rights uh, it's also, a basic dj's right to have a live mic n not yours though you're not a dj you're filling in 
You're a fill-in. Well, so are you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm driving the desk. I'm the king. Driving the desk. <laughs> is that pressing a on and off button? Anyway, come on. Let's take the first five callers and we'll see who is going to win. Is it the Trash Men or is it Marvin Gaye? When it's we got to be Marvin when, Gaye. Listen, shut they up, They won't man. call the Trash Men for oh nothing. Oh, my God. You have to shut up. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just chaos, all right? Okay. So, be quiet. Okay. So, we're going to take the first five callers and, uh, caller one, are you there? Is it the Trash Men or Marvin Gaye? Marvin, definitely. Thank you, thank One you. vote for Marvin. Thank caller you. two, are you there? Trashman or Marvin? Hello? Hello, caller two. Trashman or Marvin? Marvin. Oh, thank you, caller two. Okay, this is the decider. Caller three, is it Trashman or Marvin? Five. Come on, do it for me. It's Trashman. No! Oh. Trashman is keeping it nice and exciting. Tra caller four, Trashman or Marvin? Trashman. Whoa! Oh, it's two all. This is terrible. Okay, here's the decider. Oh, is it bruise, the Trashman trash trash and trash Serpent Burner? Well, everybody's heard oh, about the bird. What a terrible noise. The sound of Marvin Gaye. Please. Trashman or Marvin? Caller trash five. Man. Oh, no! Was that Trashman? Oh, yeah. Rushman, yes. Oh, oh, yes. This is terrible. Thank We're gonna you shed very much. listeners. Oh, and everybody's heard about the bird. <laughs> Send me for a cup of tea. <laughs> Trashmen and Surfing Bird, you voted for it. That was uh, this week's Ditty in the Dock. And I feel that, uh, you know, justice has been done in a small way because um, basically I have been getting uh, a lot of votes against me for the last few weeks with superior songs and Joe's just been bringing in novelty songs and frankly hectoring uh, the jury. Uh, with and he's been show showboating, show standing, <laughs> and using some underhand techniques to get his own way. And this week it didn't work. The trash man. Well, apparently the trash. Man. The trash. Man. Apparently, the, genuinely, the vast majority of the calls were for the trash men. Shall, shall we? And that just reflects badly on our listeners, who are probably mostly dustbin men, <laughs> and uh, that was probably voted for mostly by dustbin men. No, no, no. Well, as opposed to mostly gays. I would be happier with a gay audience than a refuse collecting audience. Yeah, well, I mean, you no know... disrespect to refuse collectors, but they smell N not not as nice as gay people. Uh, Marvin, who gay usually people. smell nice. Yeah, this is what we're talking about. We're talking trash men versus gays. What, as in Marvin Gay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually put the E on the end of his name to deflect this sort of petty schoolyard. I'm not being petty. I'm just uh, saying. I'm saying gay. Saying, that's I'm not true. Implying that he's homosexual. Even even if he was, he's dead. So it's moot. But uh, anyway, listen, we're going off the point here. Rather, uh, that's pretty much it for us this week. Um, we'll be <laughs> we'll be back with you next week. And uh, don't forget that you know you can always email us anytime you want and have some stuff ready for us so that we can see what. You 
and we, he's just emailed us, and he even he's voting for the trash man. There you go. It's a good song, man. Come on. <sighs> it's uh, it is good. <laughs> yeah, if you, yeah, it's the sort of song that would be played by tra by trash men, by garbage men That's on, on dustbins. That's just a pointless thing to say. <laughs> and you put your own voice in it. Yeah, I said it was the cup of tea remix. You dropped in a little <laughs> sample of yourself. Yeah, to make it more ex exciting. I just thought it was awful. Well, that's just so ungenerous, <laughs> you know, because you play your stuff and I think it's quite good. I thought it was awful. You are so small. You're a small man in every way, except for your height. I thought it was terrible. Height-wise, you tower above everyone. Terrible. But mentally, you're a small person. All right? Okay. <laughs> so on that bitter note, we're going to say goodbye this week and uh, leave you with this fantastic track from uh, Feeder. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Yeah, God bless you. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for emailing us. We really appreciated it. Bye.